going into tier one. We're going the tier number one, one. We're starting number with the best. One. According to Chris Sims, this is the best wide receiver yeah. in the 2023 draft class, and that wide receiver is. Can you believe that Boston College has oh. got a receiver that's yeah. vast and going to be in the top of the draft? Pete couldn't believe it. That's Zay why show Flowers, Zay number Flowers. one receiver for me in the 2023 draft. Right, we got some good ones coming up to talk about. Certainly, so it's no disrespect there to any of them, but you know, I think when you you take in, take in all things accounted here. Uh, for me, this is the guy. One, you know, the the position versatility as far as the receiver position, he can play inside or outside. You know, some of the best releases in the in the draft are from Zay Flowers. His ability to get off the line of scrimmage, bump, all of that, you know, has creative ways in doing it. Let alone, he is pedal to the metal every play, every cut, everything he does. Right, it's hard not to watch him, and I'm seeing this question at the top here. Ooh, all okay. right. Okay, let's read it M-M-A. because I want to show you my notes because my notes have this the, both names that we're wow. having here. All right, and I'm gonna just verify this so you can look. You're not making right? this I'm up. I'm not making it up. See that name there, right? I see that name. We're and about you to see that name right there. Wow. Okay. Right. All right. So let's those see. are we're about. I don't even. And, and Kristen didn't have my notes. So no, she did not have your notes, and, and couldn't have read them anyway. Probably you not. Know, right. Exactly the, the right. handwriting is so read. bad. That, yeah. No, she, she can read. Oh, she, she can. can okay. Damn it. <laughs> <laughs> she can read very well. She yeah, just Christy said she's going, going home. home. Yeah. This is what this is what happens, Kristen, when you're running the ship right here, Kristen. You never know what he's going to say, uh, as she knows. She's got to be the one responsible for what you do say and making sure they're bleeped out. MMA born sender. Why is Zay Flowers the best wide receiver in the class, and why is he the second coming of Antonio Brown? Antonio Brown is in your notebook. It's it's hard not, and again, I know those are huge. That's a huge name to throw out there, all right? But uh, all I'm just saying is the the build, the style of running, the way the guy runs routes, I was sitting there, and literally like the fifth route, I was like, Damn, this guy really reminds me of somebody's body language. I couldn't think of it. I can't think of it. I watched another few rounds. I was like, oh, I was like, this is going to sound ridiculous for me to write this. I think he looks like Antonio Brown. What? Okay. Only a Hall of Famer, first ballot guy. Yeah. But, um, yeah, he's he is like an unbelievable route runner along with the explosive athlete we talked about. Smarts, tough, and then has the weapon aspect. You know, there's that too where the reverses and the speed sweeps and all of those type of things are all going to be into a play. So you're really getting a three-in-one here with speed burner on the outside can run by you for a 70-yard bomb. Speed burner on the outside can run a six-yard slant, catch it, run by everybody, make somebody miss for a 70-yard bomb. Slot receiver inside, got great coverage, got a two-way go. He's got to be smart, got to read the coverage, got to run a really you know detailed, intricate route. He can plant his foot in the ground and burst and accelerate out of that out of that break as good as anybody in this draft. He's phenomenal that way. So yeah, I wrote Antonio Brown. I wrote Jalen Waddle. Oh, there's another name. Right. Yeah, so let's the, look at the that. guys as he reminded me of as I as I continued to watch him. So Zay Flowers is 5'9", 182. He does turn twenty three in September. You don't mind older recruits. You know, I, a, yeah, yeah. Again, well, it's the same thing I said the other day. I, when did we start? When did this become like? I want to make sure when I roll over at fifty five, he's still handsome in bed with me. Like mm-hmm. m- matter. It's a four year rental. Yeah. And then you'll figure it out. Yeah. Yeah, he's not coming over to your house. He's playing football for you. Exactly right. <laughs> you don't have to exactly. worry about that. You're not spooning with him in the bed. We're just we're just <laughs> yeah. getting him for football for a few years. So we do have a comparison to Jalen Waddle yeah. because their height, their weight is very similar, arm length. So we got Jalen Waddle is just his arms a little bit longer, which may be one of the slight knocks on Zay Flowers is that he doesn't have that catch radius yeah. that some of the other wide receivers right. obviously have that are bigger. But man, oh man, I did not I did not realize how close they were and how similar they were and now this is a type of receiver too you got Jalen Waddle you've got Devontae Smith you've got um Chris Olave sure very similar yeah watching them on the football field I'm always a little concerned yeah I was like they're they're small they're small dudes there's a lot of big dudes who run fast and hit hard right um but this is becoming obvious that in the NFL these kind of guys with this body work definitely they're just so quick and twitchy that they can avoid some of those hits and then even like guys like this 
they got a little more meat on them than even like a Chris Olave or a Garrett Wilson. They do. Right? Who are taller than these guys are, but weigh them around the same weight. Yeah, that's a good that point. A, right? So that's the other part of the game that I really liked about this kid. Because you brought up a, the great point. Like his catch radius is not, it's not spectacular. It's not ideal for what we want in the NFL. But, you know, I, the other thing is, yeah, he's not going to be wide open against everybody he plays against, especially not in the NFL. And you can see when he's down the field and people are pushing on him or the ball's in the air and people are trying to grab him, he's got incredible play strength, incredible. So, you know, these guys are little balls of dynamite. The balls of muscle really is what they are. And they have great, much greater strength than their body, you know, shape or measurables would, would uh, you know, therefore kind of tell us. I think we have some evidence of that as well. Do we? He has apparently put on 13 pounds of muscle. He did this for the combine. So if you're watching, he was 170 on the left there. And on the right, look at that. He is and he's jacked. much happier, too. Oh, and he's wearing no shoes. So <laughs> yeah. much has changed about him in that photo Ooh, on the right. Man, that is, uh, yeah, that is ripped. See, that that's NFL big-time receiver type body right there. It's just muscles on muscles on muscles. He's not worried about his calorie intake on a daily basis. I can tell you that much. <laughs> he was so much sadder as a 170-pound man. Oh, wait, yeah, just... right. Well, now he's going, damn, I'm eating Big Macs and and French fries, and I'm not. I'm just getting powerful and faster. But yeah, you know, plays bigger than than what you know what what his measurables will say. And then, like I told you, the explosive ability, the violence in which he runs routes, comes off the ball with um, his start-stop ability, like double moves, it's as good as you're going to see. I mean, it is. So this is one where, I'm, I, to me, he's a top 20 pick. I think he's. I would. I would think he's somewhere in between the ten and twenty range. I don't know if that's going to happen. This is one where again we're going to go. If this guy's on Alabama, he's definitely going to be a top ten or twelve pick because he was in Boston College. We're going to have some of the questions that you we talked about and made fun of a sure. few minutes ago where he overanalyzed. Oh, his production. Oh, you know this team. Oh, the quarterback. Oh, all this kind of stuff is going to weigh into this. But for me, yes, this is the number one receiver in the draft. Yeah, he grew up in Fort Lauderdale. Was not a highly recruited guy, three-star recruit. Yeah. Went to NSU University School, whose notable alumni include Mike Jets White, legend right? Mike White. Right. Uh, then went four years at, uh, at BC. But, yeah, set records while he was there, and uh, that is a, a Power Five conference. Uh, we do have some video of him at his pro day, and I don't yeah. know if you saw this. I am not. I'm oh, loving this. Is this is good. All right, so here, here he is see, running. So this is, this is what I mean, though. Go just rewind this if we can, just one real quick. I'm sorry to do that to everybody or if you can restart it. But, you know, first off, before we even start here, I want you to watch. He's a phenomenal of changing speeds, right? Like – kind of come off look like he's about to like maybe slow down and make a break and then he flies really fast and then hits the brakes and then makes a cut and then re-accelerates it's very hard for dbs to cover that and restart and stop and stop and so go ahead and, and play it Kristen. thank you so much but see he's really crafty in his releases off the line of scrimmage you could see how he can jam his foot in the ground and then come out and be explosive out of a break and really never lose speed sometimes, even when he's making a 90-degree turn. Um, but that's the thing I like. And then, you know, you'd hear me talk about body language, knowing how to set up DBs, right? You know, body language is important. One, for the quarterback, you start to get used to, oh, I, ooh, when he does this, I know he's about to make a break. Or when I see him do this, I know he's about to break down and then chop his feet and come out of the break. Mm -hmm. So that's important. But that body language also goes into getting the DB to back off you a little bit. And that's where he was really good, too. So, you know, it could be somebody, you know, you're the DB and I'm him and you're covering me there and you're a little on my outside shoulder. He's really good at kind of like, oh, you want to play outside of me? Oh, keep going outside. I'm going to push you outside. Oh, now I'm going to lean my head that way. And then, boom, and then fly inside. And you go, well, damn, now he's open by seven yards and it's a, it's a big play. Yeah. I love it the kid. He plays faster than his 4-4-2 speed, too. That's Ooh. the other thing I wrote down. I would have thought he was in low four threes, mid four threes for sure with what you watch on film. All right, so here's a, here's a, a con, <laughs> a weakness perhaps. Sure. Something that's being pointed out by people who are not as high cool. on Zay Flowers. <clears throat> Let's hear it. Drops were an issue for him at times. Yeah, yeah I could see that. I, I mean, there is some drops that show up. To me, so his drops aren't I can't catch the ball drops, right? There, there's a difference. Not all drops are created equal, as sure. we like to say. Yeah. His drops are... 
I want to rip the ball out of the air so quickly because I'm trying to go to the house. I'm trying to break ankles. I'm trying to split these defenders. So when you watch those, they're not like – I don't look at it and go, oh, there are drops where he's focused in on the ball and it's just hitting him in the face, right? It's more like he's running a crossing route and he's trying to rip it and he's already looking upfield. They're concentration drops. So I don't look at it as a hands problem. I look at it more as just, hey, dude, chill out. Watch the ball come in. You're punny, fast, and explosive. You'll be able to locate that defender and still make a miss. Don't worry. But that, that to me, there's a difference there than in, oh, I saw him run seven slant routes with nobody open and it just kept dropping. Or, you know what yeah. I mean? There, there's a difference in those type of drops. No Boston College wide receiver has ever been drafted in the <laughs> top three rounds. <laughs> the slow white school of Boston College where we only make offensive linemen and every now and then a diamond in the rough comes and we have a fast receiver. Who's in the middle of the first round? Do we have, Do you have the draft? <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> like, oh. like in the, like, no, like uh, teams oh, what teams selecting. are in the, oh, I, didn't, I don't Sorry, have them I up. Just, yeah. but you want me to look or let me say. Did we want to talk more about the white, white players in that uh, Boston College? <laughs> I moved on it's very funny. quickly. Yeah, I, I could see that. It made you uncomfortable. <laughs> almost as much as the A word did. <laughs> All um, right, let's go. We can go to the next one. No, so I'm saying if you're a team oh, yeah, in the middle of the first round, sure. like I don't know if there's any wide receiver needy teams here. Like who are you? Who are you looking at where he could go off the border? If they're on the clock, you're like, oh, this could be yeah. Zay Flowers if they like him as much yeah, as you do. Yeah, sure, sure. Well, I mean, okay, so you know. In the middle there, you got the Jets, the Patriots, the Packers, the Commanders, the Steelers. I don't know if any of those are looking for receivers, right? Or your or your Lions. Yeah. I don't no. know if that's happening. I don't think so. That was basically 13 through 18. Now, the Bucks at 19, they might – they could be a team. And they just start thinking about refreshing their receiver room a little bit. Yeah. I don't think – that's not crazy there. I think that's is maybe where – you know, you can get into this. The Bucks at 19, the Chargers at 21, the Ravens at 22, right? You know, you got the Giants at 25, the Cowboys at 26. So maybe that's realistically where we're saying we think he's going to end up. Because you're right. It doesn't look like in the middle part of the round there's a lot of receiver needy teams. Mm. Unless Houston, maybe at 12, maybe they want to do that. And again, like I told you, you know, I, I Waddle was the sixth pick of the draft. Again, I think if you put this kid on Alabama with all those team kids around him, we'd be thinking this kid is a higher regard yeah. uh, than what he is. But, uh, yeah, I really like him and my number one receiver. Yo, 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 thanks for watching, homies. It's the off season, but you know there's no off season for us here at Unbutton. Me, Ahmed Farid, we're going to hit all the stories. So hit subscribe for us, okay? We got a ton coming up. My draft prospect rankings, my Sims top 40 quarterback countdown, and videos of me and NFL QBs playing catch and talking about their development and mechanics. Again, thanks for watching. Remember to subscribe. Peace out, homies. See you soon.